Oke. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends and colleagues here at the Capilla sa Manila Bay. And I'm very glad that we will be featuring a very important um, aspect or sector of our economy, which is really the, which has the multiplier effect that really boosted our uh, production every year. And we felt the worst part of it when there was a pandemic and our tourism has to uh, suffer because of the closure of borders. Now we are back in business. As they say, we're back, uh, we are open to business. And definitely, the tourism sector is the best, uh, has the best multiplier effect that is now uh, fueling our growth back to economic development and progress. Without further ado, uh, I, I would like to I will quote up former President Duterte na uh, ayoko masayang ang effort ng gumawa ng magandang introduction sa ating guest. <laughs> and I have to credit Ina here for giving me this uh, magandang introduction to our guest. Prior to being handpicked by Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to lead the Department of Tourism in 2022, she was a multi-awarded local chief executive the three-term mayor of the municipality of Liloan in the province of Cebu, where tourism is the main economic driver. Under her leadership, her town of Liloan was awarded top model municipality in the Philippines and most resilient municipality in the country. She was a top performing mayor ranking number one among um, the... Uh, uh, so Tama. Among all municipal mayors in Central Visayas, she is the recipient of the Presidential Lingkod Bayan Regional Award for Excellence in Public Service during the Duterte administration. In the 2022 elections, she was the spokesperson of now Vice President Sara Duterte. She is a lawyer by profession, having graduated from Teneo Law. Prior to being mayor, she practiced international arbitration in one of the top law firms in Asia. She is a uh, professor of law. She was a professor of law. She is all, also a mother of four young children with her husband, Deputy Speaker Duke Frasco. She is the youngest member of the Marcos cabinet and was recently ranked one of the top performing cabinet officials of the Marcos administration with her high collaborative and proactive approach to tourism governance. She is determined to carry out the President's vision of transforming the Philippines into a tourism powerhouse in Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest for today, Tourism Secretary Christina Frasco. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am Marichu. Mayong buntag. Mayong buntag sa tanan to all of your listeners and viewers. Sa tanan na itong mga Pilipino sa Tibuok Pilipinas o sa Tibuok Kalibutan. Magandang umaga po. And as we always do in our Kapian, we always uh, we ask our guests to give her opening statement. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Ma Marichu, for the honor and the privilege of being here. Many personalities and nation builders have passed through this uh, Kapihan. And uh, I feel very honored to be here to be able to deliver the good news about Philippine tourism. Recently, our president, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcus Jr., approved the National Tourism Development Plan for 2023 to 2028. This is consistent with the priority agenda that he articulated very early on in his administration that included tourism. And what has ensued is a whole-of-government approach towards developing the tourism industry in the Philippines in order that our country may be given a more primary position in Asia. 
the National Tourism Development Plan envisions the transformation of the Philippine tourism industry to becoming a tourism powerhouse, recognizing the challenges that are prevailing and providing solutions to the same. Therefore, we have laid down objectives under the NTTP that seek to address essential pillars of development, which global indices have indicated the Philippines can still improve on. And I will specify that one by one. Overall, the intention of the Marcos administration is to be able to tell the Filipino story, to highlight our culture, our heritage, our identity, and to reintroduce the Philippines to the world, highlighting our excellence in Filipino hospitality, the grace with which we treat our guests, paired with all the government investment that has been and will be put in to ensure that we are more than ready to welcome back the world to the Philippines. So I'm very excited for our discussion today to uh, lay down the objectives of uh, the National Tourism Development Plan and to update you on the programs and plans that we have instituted since the beginning of the administration. As I, as I told the Secretary earlier, I would premise my questions with a tourism boom that the United, no less than the United Nations World Tourism Organization have predicted. And certainly we want the Philippines to take a big chunk of this tourism boom in our part of the world. Because we have so many competitors like Thailand, our neighbors in Indonesia, and uh, even Taiwan is getting the tourism. Mom, how much of this tourism boom can we get? Well, the good news is that the Philippines possesses all the natural resources to ensure that given the proper support would allow for our country to get a huge chunk of this boom. The World Travel and Tourism Council predicts that in just a few years, the growth of the tourism industry in all economies around the world would exceed GDP growth yes. in countries. That is the massive potential of tourism's contribution to our overall economy. While we have only reopened our borders in February of 2022, we have already seen the sustained recovery of the tourism industry. First, in terms of international arrivals. Last year, the Department of Tourism set the goal of 1.7 million in international arrivals. We were able to exceed that goal by nearly a million by ushering in 2.65 million foreign guests into the country. In addition to that, the arrivals uh, then translated to visitor receipts okay. of uh, no less than $215 uh, billion. And on the domestic side, we have seen a massive recovery of the industry with our regions ushering in an estimated 1.4 trillion in domestic revenues. This, these numbers translate to what matters most in tourism, and that is to provide employment and livelihood to our fellow Filipinos. Yes. While the Department of Tourism had set a goal of ushering in 4.7 million in employment and tourism last year, we were able to exceed that as well by uh, obtaining no less than 5.2 million in employment for Filipinos in the tourism value chain. Through these numbers, we can see how tourism, notwithstanding the recent reopening due to the pandemic, has already proven itself to be a very reliable source of income for our fellow Filipinos and a reliable source of uh, contribution to our economy. Tourism has also been seen 
to stabilize our peso yeah, in the light of uh, global pressures and also to ensure that uh, notwithstanding the fact that some of our islands are located in the farthest reaches of our country, tourism is there yeah. to provide hope, to provide work, to provide a view into the future. And the intention of the Marcos administration is to be able to maximize tourism opportunities for our fellow Filipinos, which is why we view 2023 with much optimism and hope. This year, we have set a baseline target of 4.8 million in uh, international arrivals, and we foresee the 100% recovery of domestic tourism. And you hear it as well from our tourism stakeholders who have reported even better numbers from their month-on-month -month performance in uh, 2019. So overall, the outlook for Philippine tourism is very positive especially that uh, our president has ensured that all the agencies of government help the uh, endeavors of the Department of Tourism in the various uh, areas of concern that we have identified that still needs improvement. And speaking of areas of concern, uh, Ina a while ago showed me that you recently forged an agreement with the DICT to put in Wi-Fi connectivity and major trees. Can you discuss that now? Under the Marcos administration, we have identified digitalization and connectivity yeah. to be one of the most essential components of tourism development. Yeah. We live in a digital age. Yeah. And it's very important to be able to have connectivity within our archipelagic country. And that yeah. is why we ink an agreement with the uh, Department of Information Communications Technology mm -hmm. for them to power up 94 tourist destinations all over the country with uh, free, improved internet connectivity. By the middle of this year, we can uh, expect that uh, no less than 46 of these destinations will already be powered up. And this includes our various islands and cities, uh, which include uh, as uh, far north as Baguio and other parts of the Cordilleras. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have, of course, in Central Visayas, some of our islands there, as well as in uh, El Nido, in Palawan, in uh, Boracay, of course, and uh, certain parts of Mindanao. So it'll be easier for our tourists to uh, do live streaming yeah. and give testimonials about how wonderful that time they're having in the Philippines yes. with uh, improved internet connectivity. And how much in terms of investments is DOT and partnership with DICT pouring into this free public Wi-Fi? Because this certainly it needs a lot of money, public funds to support it. Yes. Well, uh, the funding support for the improved internet connectivity will come from the DICT, okay. while the DOT has been tasked with identifying these uh, destinations. destinations. And in addition to our efforts mm. for, towards digitalization, we are actually launching this year a tourist lifecycle app, Oh, how, yes. how do you? Uh, which gives direct access to our tourist destinations all over the Philippines via your phone. Okay. So the tourist lifecycle app uh, which we are developing in collaboration with the Tourism Promotions Board, gives domestic and international tourists an opportunity to curate their experiences in the Philippines. So when you open the app, it will indicate what are the points of interest in the country, touristic activities that include, of course, going to the beach, nature-based uh, activities, outdoor sports, as well as uh, food and gastronomy, health and wellness, pilgrimage and heritage, and the like. And you merely have to click on that point of interest and it will already take you to all of the regions, provinces, cities, and municipalities that offer these activities. And it even goes further as to provide you with information on who are the travel agents and tour operators that can assist you in booking your trip 
and provides you information on the accredited tour guides okay. in the area. The intention really is to be able to give our tourist destinations, not just our well-known ones, mm -hmm. but also our lesser known and emerging destinations an opportunity to have a window into the world yeah. through this uh, mobile application that uh, will be available this year. So it's still in the works? Yes, it's presently in the works. So how, uh, how are you you're collaborating with the um, stakeholders, with the travel agents, tour guides, associations, uh, local government units? You mean to say these are still under the under works? Well, uh, for the past few months since last year, in partnership with the Tourism Promotions Board, we have been working with our regional offices mm -hmm. as well as our accredited tourism establishments and the wide range of our LGUs mm -hmm. from all of our regions to be able to gather all of the essential data that needs to be put into the app. On the other hand, uh, we have an existing database mm -hmm. of uh, the membership of yes. the Tourism Promotions Board mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, data on our accredited uh, tour guides. So we're very excited to launch this app because we feel that uh, it would be very inclusive in that uh, we can give access to livelihood to our tourism stakeholders and connect them directly to potential customers and tourists. So when is your target launching of that map? We're coming out with uh, the initial uh, soft launch mm -hmm. by either end of June or early July. That would be great. Uh, it's still a uh, uh, vacation time for the other countries to consider uh, and can get access already through the app, wherever yes. they are. Wherever they are, the Including app will Filipinos be Filipinos can wants to travel ma, domestic ma, staycation, di ba, ma'am? Yes, absolutely. It can, the app is uh, downloadable uh -huh. by uh, domestic tourists and international tourists as well. Uh -huh. Ma'am we recognize how important it is for our tourists to have essential information. Yes. Because mostly, uh, in my travels abroad, they've heard of the Philippines, but they have yet to really get to know the nuances of the Philippines and the many destinations that we have to offer. And so we felt it very important to provide this portal of information. In addition to that, we are also providing physical portals of information yes. by launching tourism information booths in partnership with the SM. And uh, we are launching it also this year, so we'll have a physical tourism information booth mm -hmm. in our malls to always provide uh, opportunities for international and domestic tourists to obtain information about our destinations. Initially, that is with the SM because Initially, they are all yes. over the Philippines, but do you intend to expand it to other malls? We do. Uh, we uh, have been in initial discussions with uh, Robinsons yes. uh, under Sir Lance to also expand the project. But initially, we are launching it with SM. So when are you going to launch this mom? physical portals? Likely in the third quarter of this year. And this will be manned by tourism personnel? Yes, it will be manned by the Department of Tourism. And in addition to that, we have also instituted our uh, tourism information booths in the airports. That includes Naya ah, Terminal okay. 2. So if I can give yes, you a visual. Get, yes, ma'am. Yun nga yung paborito kong makita yung sa uh, Terminal 2 kasi ang ganda-ganda ng improvements that you have done. Kasi ng gateway natin. Yes, maraming salamat po. Uh, yes. It was recently launched, ba ma'am? Correct, yes. So one of the things that we also recognize to be important really is the improvement of our gateways. Yeah. We recognize our airports, our seaports, even our land terminals mm. to be the first and last impression of our tourists. And we must make a good impression. And that is why we approached the Department of Transportation to ink a collaboration by way of a memorandum of agreement, mm -hmm. wherein the Department of Tourism mm -hmm. presented, number one, its wish list. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, so this is our uh, 
Naia. Improvements of Naia Terminal 2, wherein we uh, attempted to allow our tourists, domestic and international, to immediately feel the love and warmth of the Filipino people by the work of their hands. Filipino furniture, we have solihia panels, we have uh, lamps, plants, of course, that have been put in. Overall, to give you the uh, a positive feeling as you land in Naia Terminal 2. In addition to this collaboration, we have also presented a wish list to uh, the DOTR in oh. terms of the airports that we uh, would like to be improved, yes. expanded, and added to in terms of our islands, as well to present our suggestions on what we feel could be improved in terms of our frontline services in the airports. And as a tacit manifestation of this partnership, we have already begun our Filipino brand of service excellence trainings to uh, some airport frontline workers in the hopes that we would be able to uh, institute the values of Filipino hospitality to our airport personnel. The effort of improving Naia Terminal 2 will be replicated in other gateways as well, mm -hmm. including the Davao International Airport as well as the Cebu City Pier 1. Mm -hmm. On the Pier. other Pier 1, yes, yeah. seaports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the three initial uh, benchmark mm -hmm. projects. And the Naia 2, Davao International Airport, and Pier 1 seaport in Cebu. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and while we're working on these gateways, uh, we are also now, or have been, in talks with the uh, provincial and local government uh, governing Boracay okay. for the purpose of improving the experience of arrivals uh, in the seaport and to introduce digitalization in terms of the uh, efficiencies and cutting the waiting time before the tourists can finally go to Boracay. So that is presently oh. in the works. Kasi, uh, the last time I went there in October, mga one hour, din, it took me one hour because then you have to go through the health process, the environment, ka pa sa ferry and everything, yes. environment tax and everything. That's true. So uh, we've done a, a lot of queuing. Exactly. Five lines, actually. Yeah. So we've done a From time in motion. one queue to another. Tama. We've done a time in motion study, mm -hmm. specifically for uh, the Boracay experience. Yes. And uh, we're very thankful as well. Assistant to pa the, kami ng tour guide no na, pero maraming queuing talaga. Mm -hmm. We're thankful to the governor, uh, Governor Miraflor, and of course the mayor of uh, Aklan as well for being very collaborative and cooperative and we're hopeful to be able to launch this project within the year. Uh, kaya pala nabasa ko sa star namin yung Davao and Baguio yata isang airport that, that you have reopened the DOTR recently reopened the Baguio airport. Yes, uh, this is very good news especially in terms of uh, enhancing connectivity between North Luzon and Central Philippines yes. because we now have a flight from Cebu to Baguio uh -oh. and vice versa. This opens up massive tourism exchange opportunities uh -oh. between our stakeholders yeah. and we've heard very good feedback especially from our stakeholders in Cebu but how pleased they are that they can now directly access Baguio and uh, I was in Baguio to attend the Panagbenga festival together with our hard-working mayor of Baguio City. Magalo, and they were very mayor happy Magalo. as well. Yeah. That uh, they were very happy as well na meron ng flights. Though at the time, hindi pa pada mag, ano, mag uh, import ng sibulachon sa Baguio. So, <laughs> so I, I, I told mayor, we'll work on that, mayor. <laughs> May ASF problem pa. And your mom is doing something about that problem. ASF is the swine, di ba? Uh, uh, African swine flu. Yes. Oh. Uh, th th that's the another. That's the problem of your mother, <laughs> si Governor Ben Garcia. Uh, before I go to the, let's go to the. I somebody, uh, my reporter uh, reported that 
yung e-portal, yung sa, di ba, yung one pass, one health pass, immigration, naging e-port, uh, e-passport, pang, how do you call that? Mama Richu, when our president uh, started his administration, at the time, there were still several uh, pandemic era restrictions yeah, that no. existed and which we perceived to uh, disadvantage the Philippines mm -hmm. in terms of its recovery in tourism, considering that our neighbors had long opened up before us. Yeah. And so the task was to implement the directives of the Philippines to open up the country to travel and tourism. This began with the representations that we made in the IATF to lift the uh, mask mandate and also to uh, lift the requirement for an RT-PCR test to allow unvaccinated foreigners to come into the country and uh, as well as to ensure that the cumbersome One Health Pass would be replaced by a more uh, convenient way of departing and coming into the Philippines. So various government agencies came together, including the Department of Tourism, to analyze what are the informational needs of government for tourists coming into the country, what information is excessive, and what are the basics that we need to obtain. And from there, we uh, reached a middle ground. So the number of questions were reduced and the information needs of five government agencies were consolidated into one electronic platform called the e-travel yeah, e platform, which was developed by the DICT. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, it's very convenient for you to enter basic information of uh, coming into the country and we hope to be able to fully digitalize the experience of entry uh, by incorporating uh, the last few remaining paper-based information that you need to fill Le out. Uh, less paper nga. Pero there's a problem with that e-travel na yung may downtime yata or they cannot, can hardly access it. So what are you troubleshooting? Is there some troubleshooting going on? Because there have been so many complaints that it is, yes, very hard, very difficult to access that e-travel platform. The e-travel platform is readily accessible and it's run by the DICT. Mm -hmm. And I imagine since this is a new uh, program. Kasi yan, eh. <laughs> may problem yan, yes, yes, since this is a new program, uh, the DICT of course is continuing to improve. Mm -hmm. And uh, the effort being that we provide convenience yes. to our passengers. One of the most positive developments as well with the e-travel is that compared to the One Health Pass, it is no longer a prerequisite to boarding. Okay. So uh, it's important that uh, we know that you cannot be prevented from boarding your flight mm. if you uh, have not yet uh, completed the e-travel form. Although the BI does uh, provide a, a window for them to fill it up. And oh. they suggest doing it at least, I think, 72 hours before, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Physical, yung man, paper, paper. Oh, no, no, the, the e-travel. E-travel. How about yung mga low-tech? Do you provide an option to just do it paper-based? Kasi mga low-tech, yung mga usual complaints, yung mga low-tech dyan eh. Yes. Well, you know... As option lang naman for those who cannot uh, do it through... Walang, walang iPhone. Mga lumang phone, <laughs> the oh, intelligent yes, phone yes. nila. Yes, I imagine that uh, assistance can be provided by our airlines mm -hmm. as well as uh, our Bureau of Immigration officers. And so these are matters that are well within the jurisdiction of the DICT, the Bureau mm -hmm. of Immigration, as well as our airlines prior to uh, passengers boarding. Okay, let's go now to the brass tax. Yung sinasabi, ma'am, na nagkaroon ng problem, di ba, with recently, and you, you immediately corrected that, yung, yung promotion, it is not your own promotion, yung kay uh, presidential advisor on creative communication, and it's good to clarify that it's not a DOT campaign promo. So, what is the DOT promo? 
that you have you are preparing to launch also changing the morph one in the philippines well first of all our uh, country brand we give the world our best yes was uh, recently launched and uh, which is not a department of uh, tourism branding campaign mm. but still an opportunity to highlight to the world the contributions of our overseas Filipino workers for yeah. which we continue to be very thankful. Yeah. On the part of the Department of Tourism, the effort has been to conduct a wide market study okay. on the existing tourism campaign as well as global trends on travel and tourism especially post pandemic yeah so at present we are in the process of enhancing the tourism campaign and uh, we will not be launching the campaign without consultation with our stakeholders so this is literally in the works right wow. now and uh, we will make sure to let you know once uh, we are launching the same yeah. nevertheless uh, I would just like to highlight yes. that we're grateful for the gains that have been made by the previous administrations in terms of pushing for the existing tourism slogan. At the same time, we would like to give our country an opportunity to reintroduce itself to the world, not just as a fun destination, which it will continue to be, yeah. but also as a treasure trove of culture, of heritage, of history, of love and warmth, and the sheer talent of our artisans, makers, small and medium enterprises, as well as the burning pride of place of our fellow Filipinos regionally. The story of the Filipino has yet to be told in full and we intend to do that with an enhanced branding campaign but Ma Marichu may I also qualify that the promotion of the Philippines tourism does not hinge on a branding campaign alone more importantly it highly depends on product development improving aspects of the philippine tourism industry that situate our country lower than our asean neighbors number one infrastructure yes. according to the world economic forum the philippines ranks number six out of our asean neighbors mm -hmm and 75th out of 116 economies in 2021 in terms of various aspects including infrastructure that means roads leading to tourist destinations bridges drainage systems water systems sewerage systems and the like and hotels that is why and rooms hotel and resort rooms and everything that's correct and that is why number one in the national tourism development plan is really the improvement of infrastructure as a result of our collaboration with the department of public works and highways it has been reported by the department of budget and management that 17.7 .7 billion pesos has been devoted to constructing tourism infrastructure in the philippines this year we hope to be able to increase this number next year as we recognize that we still have many destinations around the country that require assistance in terms of accessibility. We're also working with our attached agency, TIEZA, in terms of uh, taking a look at the destinations that still require infrastructure in terms of drainage, seawalls, and the like, as well as storm surge protection. In addition to that, since you mentioned hotels and resorts, we do recognize the necessity for tourism investment, yes. as that is a great advantage that our neighbors enjoy, especially in terms of the number of rooms available. And therefore, 
as uh, already announced by our president. The country approach is to announce to the world that we are open for investment in general. In particular, we are very open for tourism investment. At present, under the IESA, we have existing flagship tourism enterprise zones that are ready for investment. And this includes the ones in uh, Palawan, Bohol. We also have one in Clark, as well as uh, other areas in the country. We also presently have privately run tourism enterprise zones. And we continue to institute the effort of expanding the number of our tourism enterprise zones in the Philippines so that we spread opportunities for tourism investment. More specifically, the tourism investment that we are inviting both foreign and domestic investors to uh, partner with government include the building of hotels, resorts, amusement parks, sports facilities, convention yeah. centers, especially that we are prioritizing mice as a tourism product, and overall increased uh, tourism infrastructure facilities all over the country. You mentioned tourism enterprise zones. Where are these currently located? Yes. So, so, so they ex, uh, uh, enjoy tax perks, tax incentives when they are located in the tourism enterprise zones? Yes, that, that is true. Under the revised Public Service Act mm -hmm. and the recently passed uh, yeah. law, yeah. for any tourism-related investment, it allows for 100% foreign direct equity. Mm -hmm. And it also provides a host of incentives that include lower corporate income tax, uh, import tax exemptions on certain tourism-related transactions, uh, special access to certain visas for the personnel that will be involved in the investment, and certain uh, other tax amnesties that uh, would make it more attractive to uh, invest in the country. So, so where are these tourism yes. enterprise zones? Our, no, our flagship TEZs are uh, located as mentioned earlier, in Palawan, specifically in San Vicente, in Bohol, in uh, Panglao Island. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, Corregidor Island is now a flagship uh, tourism enterprise zone. And uh, we also have Mount Samat in Bataan, as well as uh, the area of uh, the vicinity of Rizal Park, where the Manila Ocean Park is presently located. In addition to this, we have a uh, property in Clark, Pampanga, that is also a registered TZ, and uh, 15 other registered tourism enterprises that are presently run privately. I recently went to Clark and we had a uh, snake, uh, steak, steak culinary, uh, uh, sticky. Yeah, I was invited to that uh, uh, media campaign of theirs. And they have lots of new hotels, but I did not know that part pala yun ang, uh, tax, uh, tourism enterprise, enterprise zone. There is an identified property within Clark uh -oh. that is uh, identified as a tourism enterprise zone. So, big hindi ka samas, ma'am? I'm not in this list. Uh -oh. uh, as far as Clark is concerned, we're very grateful for the work of the Clark Development Corporation. Yes. Oh. They've been very aggressive in really yes. pushing like for... Clark International Airport na sila, yung Lipad being run by Lipad, di ba ma'am? Yes, we're very grateful for their efforts, no? Especially... Pero hindi kasama yun sa ano, ha? Dun sa, uh, sa airport MOA mo, ma'am. Kasi very highly improved naman yung newly refurbished yung Clark International Airport. Yes, uh, as far as Clark is concerned, Considering that it is uh, newly built and is yeah. really quite a beautiful airport. Yes. Uh, the At walang ingay. Yung mga typical ingay sa airport. Yes. Walang ganong mga yung announcement, announcement. Mm -mm. The interventions that we've tried to make for Clark when uh, we came in was really to partner with the DOTR in terms of building up their connectivity. Yes. In terms of adding international, or rather yeah, resuming international eh. flights, uh -huh. as well as adding domestic flights to and from Clark. Yeah. And the result of that 
is that under the Marcos administration, we now have flights from Clark to Katiklan, mm -hmm. Clark to Usuanga, as well as uh, Clark to, I think it's Cagayan de Oro, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So the effort but Domestic really is, yan, domestic. Yes, In the effort is to open up Clark. International, konti lang nakita ko kung ano, nakabila ko mga dalawa, tatlong ano, mga uh, Arabian Airlines. Sabi ko, sayang naman, ganda-ganda ng Clark International Airport. Dapat madagdagan pa yung... Uh, there have been. There have been additions to international flights into Clark. Yes. But uh, since we've discussed Clark, the other airports are uh, also in the works as mm. far as building up connectivity uh, to include opening up uh, Mindanao mm. through the uh, further development of the Davao International Airport, the uh, development of Lagindingan Airport, the development of Mlang Airport in wow. North Cotabato, and uh, in Bohol, of course, no, the further improvement of their airport there. So what we foresee to be one of the strengths that the Philippines can have is really government's focus on improving the availability and quality of airports and yes. gateways. Yes, ma'am. And that ranks uh, very high in our list of priorities under the NTDP. The Mactan Cebu International Airport, of course, is now Asia's best airport under the 5 million category. And we have seen a massive recovery in the number of flights that uh, Cebu has, both for domestic and international, since the start of the Marcos administration. Yes, and partially, um, majority part of that is because of the, you're the leadership of your mom, Governor Gwen Garcia, she's very active, proactive in promoting Cebu. And you went with the president in several of this, and the last one was in the United States. Any particular new investments that you were able to ink while there, or come, they're coming in soon? Well, the effort of our president has been to champion the Philippines to the world and to position our country as a viable destination for investments in all aspects of our economy, including tourism. And uh, recently in Japan, during a uh, business forum there at which our president delivered his remarks, we were able to meet a host of uh, Japanese companies uh, to whom we presented our uh, tourism enterprise zones. So we continue to report on the availability of these potential uh, areas the for investment. Ma'am, nabanggit mo kanina yung you're trying to ease the coming in of tourists, including unvaccinated, unvaccinated foreigners. So, how would you assuage the fears of resurgence of COVID here if we are very lax with the entry of unvaccinated tourists, foreign tourists? First of all, no less than the World Health Organization has declared an end mm -hmm. to the emergency status of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. That, in and of itself, declaration by this global health organization should assuage mm. general fears about the pandemic. That being said, the Department of Health continues in its uh, massive vaccination efforts yeah. in our country. And by now, having labored under the constraints of pandemic restrictions, I believe that the Filipino people have become educated enough to make a reasonable choice in terms of managing their own health vis-a-vis -vis other people and in situations that they find themselves in. It's now optional to wear a mask. Yeah. And so if you feel that uh, you are experiencing symptoms, then yeah. you have the option to wear a mask. If you feel that you are in too crowded of a place where there are possible uh, persons with symptoms, then you're also at liberty to wear a mask. But ma'am, I live in Cebu. I come from Cebu, mm. whose economy chiefly depends on tourism. Yes, and I have I seen the suffering 
of our tourism frontliners and stakeholders because many of all lost the jobs. lockdowns. Oh, yeah, many lost jobs. Because of the pandemic. We simply cannot go back to those lockdowns. And our president has declared as much. Mm. Because now is the time for economic recovery. To recover all that has been lost mm. and to gain more from what we can potentially have in terms of Philippine tourism. So our way is forward. Our focus is how we can position the Philippines into the tourism powerhouse that it can be. That is why we're addressing also the enhancement of the overall tourist experience. Mm -hmm. Within the time that we've had here in the Department of Tourism, we've managed to break ground on 10 tourist rest areas all over the country. Yeah, I saw in your video. Yes. And then how many more are you going to build? We're building 10 more this year. How do you call it? Tourist rest area? Yes, tourist rest area. So these tourist rest areas, first of all... But there are major infrastructure. Nakita ko ganda yung mga ano, buildings. Yes, yes. And pare pareho ganun ang ano, style ng tourism rest areas. There is a unified design yeah. that uh, so seeks DOT is to the one funding it or the LGUs. Our attached agency, Tiaza, is so, funding the tourist rest areas. And we are instituting this program in collaboration with our local government units that mm. provide the property. Oh, so yeah. there's a unified design that yeah. aims to present uh, Filipino elements in the design to provide the most basic necessity for any tourism activity or any travel. Clean and decent restrooms. In addition to that, uh, it also has an information center as well as a Pasalubong Center. So uh, they, can, may, 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 they can buy also souvenirs. Correct. Self-sustaining. In short, self-sustaining. Yes, that's true. Because uh, we wish to provide our small and medium enterprises, our local vendors, mm. our uh, Pasalubong makers, yeah. no? with opportunities to sell their goods. And ma'am, to ensure na palaging may toilet Saka paper. may parking area. May parking area. Hindi na kami pupunta sa mga gasoline station just to ano, uh -oh. call up nature. Yes. And to ensure na palaging may toilet paper, <laughs> meron tayong criteria for mm. maintenance yes. that we are giving to the LGUs. Uh -oh. And if they are able to comply with this criteria uh -oh. uh, with at least 90% compliance, by the end of the year, mm -hmm. then we give them financial incentives. Wow. So it's really a partnership with our local government units. Ano basic design niya? At least two cubicles for women or two cubicles for men? It actually or? varies. Uh -uh. Um, per, it varies on the need of uh, the, the area. Like for example, the one in uh, Pagodpod, Ilocos Norte, actually has a shower area. Wow, since uh, directly na? beside the since it's directly beside the beach. Uh -huh. Yes. Meron bayad, ma'am? No. No, no. This is uh not uh not charged to the public. Okay. So, um, but it would help if you buy a pasalubong. Yes. In the pasalubong yes, center yes. to help with the sustainability. And the good thing is that because uh They've sprouted up all over the country. Uh -huh. We've actually received offers from the private sector uh -huh. to build the tourist rest areas at their own expense. But following the DOT design. Following this design and to partner with the DOT and the LGU in running it. So, so far, we've been able to break ground in Pagodpod, Ilocos Norte. Uh -huh. We have one in Baguio City as well as uh, in Cebu. We have in Palawan, in Bohol in Davao del Norte, specifically Samal Island, as well as in Bukid Nun. I was uh, waiting for you to announce something along in Central Luzon because we always do the um, sightseeing, car by sightseeing na lang. Wala, walang ibang restroom doon, kundi yung mga gasoline stations. Ma'am, we have 10 more this year. In Central Luzon? We have 10 more that, that will be built this year. And the so, private sector uh, offer, how many ang nag-offer na? So far, we have uh, received uh, offers from two uh, potential partners, huge corporations. 
as well as even LGUs are now offering to mm. build tourist rest areas in compliance with this design. Recently, Governor Gwen Garcia announced that she's building four oh. tourist rest areas in Cebu to correspond to the same uh, uh -uh. Yeah, specifications provided by the Department of Tourism. And one thing I noticed in your video presentation prepared by Ina here is the new greeting because I usually encounter that at Edsa Shangri-La and I was teasing Chairman B.F. Fernando who filed the bill in Congress when he was a congressman that to change, uh, we should have uh, practiced the greeting instead of shaking hands. That was during the pandemic to avoid contact, physical contact. You just put your hand, right hand to your heart as a greeting. And I was, uh, I was teasing him, Oh, sir, nag -talk fire na yung gesture mo. And uh, Ina told me that it was your uh, idea to, Im to implement that uniform hand greeting all over hotel establishments and other tourism establishments. Ma'am, I cannot take credit. Because uh, the Filipino brand of service excellence uh -huh. is actually a continuing program of the Department of Tourism. But probably, the reason why you see it more now oh. is because for the very first time, the Department of Tourism is embarking on the most ambitious goal of training no less than 100,000 Filipino frontline tourism workers in the Filipino brand of service excellence. And so far, while we have not yet reached the middle of this year, we have already been able to train no less than 43,000 Filipino frontline tourism workers across our regions in the country. The Filipino brand of service excellence recognizes that the greatest asset of Philippine tourism are our Filipino tourism workers. And our incomparable ability to exude Filipino hospitality excellence. And with that, we wish to be able to capitalize on this strength by training more and more individuals in the tourism value chain to have a common approach to caring for and even greeting our guests and to institute to them the seven values of uh, Filipino hospitality. What and, is that seven values? Well, just to name a few, no? Um, it's uh, makatao, makadros, makatalikasan, no? bayanihan, and a host of other values that surround our inherent ability to show care and compassion for others. From the statistics that we have, owing to the survey that was conducted, yeah by uh, our DOT office no? on visitors that come to the country. The number one reason that uh, they come or would come back, as they say, are the people. And that is, in and of itself, an indication of the experience that we are able to give to our tourists through our hospitality. In direct connection to that, is a program that we are launching in June of this year called the Philippine Experience. The Philippine Experience program is a heritage, culture, and arts caravan that we are taking across the Philippines, not just to our well-known destinations, but also and even to our island, lesser known and emerging destinations. It will be a three-day package tour for international and domestic tourists that will give them opportunities to visit our beaches, our nature-based destinations, our heritage and pilgrimage sites and the like, but also give them an opportunity to have a window into the heart and soul of the Filipino that rests firmly in our festivals, our food, our songs, our dances, our uh, weaving and tribal communities and all of these nuances of the Filipino culture that have yet to be well known to the world. So we're very excited to launch this. Uh, initially, we are doing the Filipino, the Philippine experience rather, in uh, 
Davao in June, and uh, this will be followed as well shortly by uh, Ilocos Norte, and we have uh, Bicol, and then Calabarzon. We also have uh, in Region 6, we have in CAR, Region 10, 3 and 9, and so on and so forth throughout when the year. When you say three-day package, uh, is this a government is, a, is it a PPP project with your stakeholders? And how do the people can get into this three-day package? Yes. So initially what we've been doing is to have our regional offices collaborate with our local government units mm. to be able to identify what are their strengths in terms of their tourism products, oh. to lend the expertise and assistance of the DOT in terms of developing these products and then to package them. And the intention is that we will be partnering with our tour operators and travel agencies to be able to uh, commercially sell the packages mm. to our tourists. So uh, late, later this year, ang launch nito, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. Um, initially, what we'll be doing are uh, familiarization tours for our travel agencies uh -huh. and uh, tour operators. So it will be offered to local and foreign tourists Yes. That three day three day package. Meron bakit target amount para maging accessible, affordable naman to sa Filipino tourists then. Yes. Well, those details are still being finalized. Okay. Mama, last question before I open it to the floor. At I know there had so many questions. I would like to turn into ma micro. Uh, and most recently, the I would call it for now accident because the origin of fire is not yet established. The Manila Postal Office that got burned down, now his heritage site, and, and in fact, former Secretary, Tourism Secretary Dick, and former Senator Dick Gordon, and uh, disclosed nga, it was originally offered to Fullerton of Singapore to be developed into a hotel like they have in Singapore na using their old postal a uh, building uh, historic then. What will now happen with the, our Manila Postal Agency? And now there are questions na, baka naman maganda yung idea ng Fullerton to turn into a legacy hotel or whatever. Ano po ang feedback sa inyo na Pangulong Marcos on this burned down building? Well, first of all, the uh, incident concerning the unfortunate uh, burning down of the post office is a tragedy in terms of heritage and it is such a cultural treasure yeah. that uh, deserves uh, national attention and support. We note the remarks that have been made by the city government of Manila that has assured that it will not be uh, torn down and from our end in the Department of Tourism, recognizing the heritage value of this structure, we are prepared to follow through on the direction that the Marcus administration would wish to take in terms of how to rehabilitate the structure, especially considering that our attached agency, Tieza, has long uh, lent uh, assistance in terms of uh, rehabilitation of heritage structures. That's nice to hear. Uh, at least I hope in that sad tragedy, national tragedy. There is always hope yeah. where there is life. And optimism that you are bringing forth in your tourism plans. Yes. That, uh, the floor is now open to your questions. And please introduce yourself before you ask your questions. The microphone. Okay, Mads, would you like to start the ball rolling. Hi, uh, good morning, Mads. Uh, Turn on the mic. Okay. Mads, para makita ang beauty mo. Hi, good morning, Mads. Mads, from Net 25. The other day po, yung Manila Health Department is calling po for the national uh, government na ibalik daw yung uh, no vaccination card, no entry sa mga establishment. Kasi parang 
Ang naging epekto niya kasi naging lax na raw yung mga tao and tumaas po yung COVID cases. Ano pong tingin dito ng DOT since you're pushing po na mas palakasin pa natin yung tourism arrival and yung no vax, no entry na yon ay hindi na natin sinusuportahan kasi nga nakaka-discourage lang siya ng mga turista. Thank you po. Has a direct connection been established to the increase in COVID cases and the no vax, no entry? No naman, ma'am. Kaya lang, parang yun yung tinitignan niya na parang yung mababang vaccination coverage daw po kasi, sabi ng Manila Health Department, parang yun daw yung naging reason kaya tumataas yung cases. Kaya he's calling po, oh, Dr. Parang is calling po for the national government na sana ibalik niya yung no vaccination card no entry. Vaccination statistics are within the uh, avenue of the Department of Health in terms of the percentages that have been accomplished. But what I am aware of is that the Marcos administration has strongly advocated for the continued vaccination of our population nationwide and regionally. May coming pang bivalent, di ba? May coming mm -hmm. delivery pa ng yes. bivalent. As far as the Department of Tourism is concerned, precisely because we are and have been already at a very disadvantaged position in terms of tourism recovery, recovery vis-a-vis -vis our ASEAN neighbors. The effort of the DOT has been to rationalize overly stringent pandemic era protocols that prevent our tourism stakeholders from recovering lost income. Nevertheless, in the recent uh, memorandum that we released to our tourism enterprises, we have still pitched for the observation of uh, basic and minimum health standard protocols. Ma'am, clarify ko lang. Uh, kailang ito yung sinabi yung IATF, you submitted your recommendations to the IATF for, to allow unvaccinated foreign tourists. Kailan po yun yung sinadmit? As I know, uh, we presented that last year, if I'm not uh, last mistaken. Year yes, and we already do allow unvaccinated foreigners to come into the country. Mads, is that question? Mo? Or may follow up? Ka? Okay. Oh, sige. Hi, Secretary. I'm Joyce Balancho from ABS CBN. Just like to ask, how is the tourism sector now in provinces massively affected by the oil, oil spill? Has it already recovered? And then, what is specific assistance given to the tourism workers affected? Thank you. The oil spill in certain parts of uh, Oriental Mindoro has affected frontline tourism workers uh, in the sense that those whose livelihoods depend on the integrity and quality of the water uh, have had to seek alternative livelihood. And the assistance given by the Department of Tourism in my visit there to uh, Puerto Galera, where I met with several, I dove in Puerto Galera, yes, where I met with several uh, local chief executives, is to provide alternative tourism skills trainings that uh, range from uh, pasalubong making to uh, pastry making and the like, no, uh, in order that they will have a ready source of income, even if they can no longer uh, uh, exercise their uh, tourism, original tourism profession. And by the end of the trainings, we give them a starter kit related to a training they received. And we are uh, in partnership with the Department of Labor and Employment in terms of giving them to pad financial assistance once they've completed the training. I would also like to compliment the work of the governor of Oriental Mendoro, Governor Dolor who has been tireless in uh, leading the recovery efforts for Oriental Mindoro. And the good news is that uh, while the dive sites in Oriental Mindoro, including Puerto Galera, continue to be uncompromised, there are also many other non-water-based tourism destinations in Oriental Mindoro that our tourists can visit throughout the year. As we speak, Secretary, do you have a displaced tourism worker or all of them have been provided alternative livelihood? They are still in the process of uh, 
continued uh, training exercises at this time. Thank you, Secretary. Cedric, where are you? Um, Ayan. Okay, okay. Cedric Castillo po from GMA7. Ma'am, just to be clear, yung uh, phrase or yung sentence po na we give the world our best is at the moment just a guideline, ma'am, o parang framework, not yet officially a slogan? We give the world our best is a country brand that seeks to highlight the massive contributions of our overseas Filipino workers, including our health workers, to give the world a window into the compassion and care that Filipinos are able to give to various nationalities. And this uh, country brand is uh, the umbrella brand uh, to which uh, other government agencies, including the Department of Tourism, will align as uh, we fashion and enhance our existing tourism brand. But is it an option, ma'am, to replace yung current uh, slogan po? Which slogan? The DOT slogan, you mean? Yes, ma'am. As mentioned earlier, uh, we are now in the process of enhancing the current tourism slogan. Not just fun in the Philippines. Not Correct. Just <laughs> yes, because uh, there are so many aspects of Philippine tourism that uh, go beyond fun. So we're very excited to highlight all of these strengths of Philippine tourism. Kaya tatanggalin lang isang word na more fun, not just fun in the Philippines. Pero my... my <laughs> when you say enhance, ma'am, uh, replace. Enhance. <laughs> improve. Yeah, enhance, uh, improve, <laughs> alleviate, uh, uh, tweak, make tweak. better, uh, tweak. tweak. Uh, yeah, sige. Hintayin, but, hintayin na lang po namin, ma'am. Hintayin. Ma'am, ma on another issue po, ma'am, uh, sa El Nido, ma'am, uh, meron silang uh, three months, I think, na uh, no island food preparation policy po dun, dahil dun sa cases ng gastroenteritis. Uh, may we just get, ma'am, baka ang DOT, ma'am, merong remarks on this uh, issue po. On a national government perspective, I have been in continued conversation with the uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Secretary Tony Yulo Loizaga, as far as our collaborative efforts together with the Department of Interior and Local Government, si Secretary Benhur Abalos, to consolidate efforts towards national, national sustainable tourism development. That's why we're proposing the convening of a National Sustainable Tourism Council for purposes of providing a general framework for uh, tourism preservation, promotion, and uh, sustainable development. That being said, we recognize that uh, our tourism destinations fall within the purview of the territorial jurisdiction of our local government units. And as I understand, this initiative was uh, done by the LGU. And from our end, uh, we would love to collaborate with the uh, LGU of Coron, the mayor of whom I've met, uh, El Nido as well, uh, in terms of trying to ensure that while we manage the uh, water quality of uh, Palawan in general and in specific areas, we are also able to manage and regulate activities that are not unnecessarily uh, harmful to the environment or uh, unduly or would unduly deprive livelihood to our local vendors so that is the extent that i can say while they are still crafting that policy thank you uh, before i uh, ask Gio Ong from the Philippine Star yung in my recent column may suggestion pa nga ako just to tweak the ano, controversial give the best in the Philippines Sabi ko eh, find the best in the Philippines. Kasi di ba medyo may negative connotation ng give. Kasi yung OFWs natin, we tend to send more, deploy more OFWs and we are having the brain drain and uh, other professionals leaving our country. Kaya sabi ko, it's just a little tweak lang siguro ang kailangan. Okay, okay. I think Mami. it's really a matter of perspective yeah. in terms of whether you perceive it negatively or positively. Mm -hmm. Because from the experience that I've had, going around the world mm. and meeting so many various nationalities, 
I have not met a single foreign national who has still told me a negative story about the Filipino. Yeah. It has always been that Absolutely. they have a positive story about a Filipino, a positive experience that yeah. they've had of having received no less than care and compassion and the ability to go beyond one's duty, to give one's best in service of others. Yeah. That's what I've seen. And here naman, locally, I was mayor prior to becoming yes. secretary. Yes. And as you know, one of the uh, most common activities that mayors have to attend are fiestas. Yeah. From huge city fiestas to fiestas in our barangays, our sitios, our puroks. No matter the income class of the group or family throwing the fiesta, you will never feel less than the best of what they have. They will bring out their cubiertos for you, they will prepare their lechon, the best of their food, just to make their guests feel loved yeah. and welcome. <laughs> Filipinos here also give the world their best, yeah. and that is what I've seen. But I, I suppose others have a more negative perception. Yeah. Um, many mayors here in the Philippines are members of the KBL. Casal Binyag Living. Gio, please. Good morning, Mr. Secretary. Um, in what you call enhancing the tourism slogan, um, meron po ba kayong parang i-highlight ng mga tourism, tourist destinations, uh, especially in various aspects of tourism like farm, health and wellness, ganyan? Ah, may carrying, may carrying steam na provincia o tourism site. Yes. Well, First of all, I think that is a uh, multifaceted question. So allow me first to address the destination. The good news is that the Philippines is now the world's leading beach destination, yeah. the world's leading dive destination, and Asia's leading tourist attraction. Take note that these awards from the World Travel Awards on beach and dive do not indicate a specific Oh, yeah. location, yes. but rather award the entire, country, the entire country, emphasizing the fact that we do have a host of beautiful beach and dive destinations in the country. That being said, we also have award-winning destinations in terms of specific locations. Yes. For example, Palawan has recently been awarded as uh, the most desirable island in the rest of the world yeah. by the United Kingdom Wanderlust Awards. Cebu was recently nominated as uh, Asia's leading wedding destination and it's been declared of course one of the top islands in Asia and Boracay our gem continues to be uh, declared as uh, Times 100 World's Greatest Places one of the best islands according to Condé Nast and we have Shargao that uh, has also been given awards for uh, being one of the best island destinations. Apart from the physical offerings that we have as a nation in terms of our natural resources, we also have all the other nuances of Philippine tourism that have yet to be given full attention. Our culture our food, the talents and work of our local artisans, our small and medium enterprises, the stories of our communities, the history of uh, our various regions that have had different influences as the decades have passed. Mindanao, also continues to hold the key to our uh, Filipino identity. I recently had the privilege of visiting Sultan Kudarat, where uh, we launched the Visita Be My Guest program. There, I was enamored by the authenticity of their culture, from the food that they prepared, to the arnis performances, to the dances that they have, to the ornate and intricate clothing that they wear down to their traditions. All of these are stories that have yet to be told to the world. And we're very excited to have the opportunity
to tell these stories through the enhanced tourism brand for the Department of Tourism. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, please introduce yourself. Good morning po, Alvin Palabello from Eurotv Philippines. Ma'am, follow up lang dun sa question ni Joyce. Does the DOT have the details kung how many percent na po ang fully recovered na sa mga naapektuhan ng oil spill sa Mindoro? We would be happy to give you the percentages in terms of the oil spill recovery. But uh, chiefly, that is the avenue of the OCD. No? So, uh, Director Ina, if you can kindly provide the statistics. In terms of the alternative livelihood, however, uh, we are in continuous training of the various uh, communities uh, where there are tourism frontliners involved. Mm. The details, ma'am, no, uh, under the tourism sector came from OCD or the DOT. Oh, you're, uh, I, I, was about, about, I was about to ask under the tourism sector. Sa naapektuhan po ng OSP. In particular, yung mga tourism workers daw, na recovered how much? Oh, yes. How many? Mm, yes. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, we are in the process of offering trainings to the affected tourism workers. So, I think the measures of recovery... Yung training uh, na yun, libre naman yan, di ba? Yes, man? yes, yes. The, the trainings are free. And... So I think the measures of recovery can only be known no once we've completed the trainings. Yung mga upskilling yan naman. Yung mga upskilling, upskilling, upskilling. Tataasan ang skills nila. Uh, TESDA, are you in collaboration with TESDA on that? Well, we do have an existing collaboration with TESDA, specifically in terms of uh, upskilling our uh, tour guides. Okay. But we wish to expand this uh, partnership by uh, aggressively pursuing tourism education. Yeah. When well, I was... Sabi mo, may 100,000 kayong target and so far you have trained 40,000. 43,000. 43,000. Is that a separate program? That is a separate program. Where do you do you help your training program? Regionally? For the Filipino brand of service excellence. No, you 100... I, for Filipino brand of excellence, yung 100,000. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yes. The partnership that we wish to pursue with TESTA has to do with tourism education scholarships. Ah, okay. Yes. Yung sa enhanced brand is with your regional offices. Correct. So, it's spread out yun throughout the Philippines. Yes. For the, uh, throughout the year. Correct. Yes. Is that for free also? The Filipino brand of service yes. excellence trainings. Yes, we don't charge. How can they access that if they want to join, to be trained? They can simply approach any of our regional offices. And we're also doing this not just in partnership with the regional offices, but also with our partner hotels, resorts, various oh, tourism okay. establishments. Yeah, okay. Yes. Another issue, um, do we experience now the impact of WHO's lifting the COVID-19 um, as a health emergency of concern sa, sa tourism in the Philippines? Yes. The declaration of the end of the pandemic by the World Health Organization has given a boost in terms of hope for our tourism stakeholders and frontliners in the continued momentum for recovery that has already begun under the Marcos administration. We have received various reports from our regional offices on improved month-on-month -month performance comparative to 2019. Overall, as a country, we are also seeing very strong recovery for various tourism products for the Philippines, including cruise tourism. Cruise? Yes. So in 2019, the Philippines received 102 cruises. And uh, this uh, has come back in a very big way to the Philippines. As uh, Initially, we uh, had... Uh, expected 139 uh, ports of call this year. From 102 pre-pandemic level is greater, pa ba? 132. 139. At 39. Now, yes. So now it's 139. Although there have been adjustments in uh, Coming, the cruise tourism calendar because of uh, immigration policies that have yet to be improved. But nevertheless, it is a minimum of a 20% increase in the number of cruises that are uh, coming to the Philippines that mm -hmm. go across our various island destinations. 
Speaking of immigration and visa policies, uh, one of the challenges that the Philippines has also had, especially in terms of tapping major source markets, including China and India, are our existing visa policies. And that is why the Department of Tourism, under the directive of our president, convened a Philippine visa reforms convergence. Among the Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Justice, the Bureau of Immigration, the DICT, and other related government agencies for the purpose of reviewing existing visa hindrances and improving the same. Specific to China and India, our president has released a directive for the implementation of an electronic visa system, recognizing, for example, that the Chinese exported no less than 160 million outbound travelers yeah. all over the world in 2019. Over 30, mil over 30 million of which went to the ASEAN, yeah. 10 million of which went to Thailand, but only 1.7 million went to the Philippines. There's massive potential for expansion. And that is why, uh, at present, as I am aware, the DFA is now in collaboration with the DICT uh, in terms of uh, taking a look at how we can implement the e-visa system this year. On the other hand, we are very pleased that uh, per our appeal to the DFA to reinstitute the group travel visa, it has now been reinstituted and we have already received chartered flights from China for group travel. Uh, we're also still working with the uh, Bureau of Immigration in terms of uh, improvements in the cruise landing permits for our uh, guests that come via cruises. But I must warn you, mga chartered group travels na yan, they usually impose na kailangan yung interpreter galing sa kanila, yung kailang bus na gagamitin is Chinese, uh, mga Chinese din. And Koreas also impose the same requirements. Kaya yung instead na sa Pilipinas ma-translate yung benefits, sa kanila pa rin bumabalik yung tourism receipts because they impose their own conditions. These are sentiments that have been expressed by our tour guides and the various listening tours that I have conducted all over the country. And what I can assure, as I have assured our tour guides, is that uh, we are taking these matters into serious consideration yeah. in terms of discussing with our uh, foreign jurisdictions on how we can be inclusive yeah. as far as group travel is concerned. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we recognize that when international visitors come to the country or when domestic travelers visit our destinations, the tourism receipts are not limited to the tickets that they purchase or the amount that they give to their tour guides. Yeah. Rather, it expands to the entire tourism value chain, including our small and medium enterprises, yes. our restaurants, our uh, other tourism yeah. enterprises. Oh, ma'am. Uh, tapos, ma'am, nabanggit mo, it's still ongoing yung visa reforms. Is it? Yes. When are you going to complete this review, reforms review? The review is already underway, and that is why the group travel has already been reinstituted, mm -hmm. group travel visas. Ah, it's continuing, uh, you know, it's, it's, yes. it does not stop there. Not at all, mm -hmm. yes. And the e-travel is now a system that is being uh, worked on by the DFA and uh, the DICP. Okay. No more, any more questions? Okay. So uh, Mads. Ah, say, okay, okay. Good morning, uh, Madam Secretary and uh, Madam Villanueva. Uh, I'm Joel Puntanilo of People's Journal. My question is, in relation to National, De uh, National Tourism Development Plan, how, what is the specific strategies of programs and uh, projects that uh, will boost uh, national uh, tourism uh, promotion industry that uh, can serve better for our uh, Filipino people? Curriculum? Tama ba na rin ko? Curriculum. Ano yung first part mo? No? Specific strategies of programs and policies. Uh, yeah. Sir, salamat sa pangutana. Maraming salamat po. Um, there are key, three key strategies under the National Tourism Development Plan. And that is connectivity, convenience, and equality. On the aspect of connectivity, as mentioned earlier, 
Uh, we are in partnership with the DPWH as well as the DOTR in terms of uh, investing in road infrastructure and other tourism related infrastructure, expansion and improvement of airports, as well as in routes development. Under the Marcos administration, we have received various percentages of recovery in terms of the flights that have now been resumed and added to our portfolio inbound. For example, in Cebu, we have had a 358% uh, increase in inbound flights comparative from June 2022 to May 2023. For Clark, we've had a 294% increase in terms of inbound flights from June last year to May this year. For Calibo, we've had a 700% increase in terms of inbound flights comparative to last year. Davao, 150% increase. For Bohol, 250, 200% increase in flights. On the aspect of convenience, we are enhancing the overall tourism experience through the uh, uh, institution of tourist rest areas, the introduction of digitalization through improved internet connectivity, and the development of a tourist lifecycle app. And one thing I failed to mention, my Marichu, is we're also launching this year a tourist assistance call center. So should you encounter any issues or difficulties while you're traveling across the Philippines, you will now have one number to call to seek um, assistance on any tourism-related matters. Now, uh, on the aspect of equality. Ma'am, take a muna. Ano yes. yung number? What's the number? Oh, we have yet to launch it, Ma'am ah, yet, no, yeah, yet to launch Coming this soon. year. Coming soon. And then, uh, the third is uh, equality, which for me, as a former local chief executive, really is the most important. Ma inclusivity, ma yan. So early on in the administration, our president elucidated that countrywide development is very important to him in terms of leaving no one behind yeah. in the development of tourism. And that is why our effort throughout this year has been to reach out as far as possible to various local government units across the country to bring them into the fold of tourism development. For this reason, we have launched already the Tourism Champions Challenge, okay. which seeks to give opportunities to city and municipal mayors from our over 1,400 municipalities and over 100 cities to become champions for Philippine tourism by presenting a tourism proposal to the DOT, which we will then assess and provide assistance in terms of improvement to the end that uh, by the end of the Tourism Champions Challenge, we will be awarding no less than 180 million pesos in partnership with the TIEZA for tourism proposals that comply with the National Tourism Development Plan. So what our fellow Filipinos can expect is... So how much is that? One million each to the winners? The first prize for uh, each of the five winners for Luzon, each so in, top five lang, top five. Top five for Luzon, top five for Visayas, top five for Mindanao. First prize is 20 million. Second prize is 18 million. The third prize is uh, 15 million, followed by uh, 10. And, and uh, yes, am I right? Yes. Sato. And 8 million. Second prize was 18 or 15 million. So many millions yeah, we're giving yeah, away yeah, for yeah, tourism yeah, development. 180 million. Basta, <laughs> basta yung total. 180, 180. million. So yes. what our fellow Filipinos can expect is that the Marcos administration is investing in tourism. Not just in our well-known destinations, but also in our lesser-known destinations. Finally, while we have focused on improving the building blocks for transforming the Philippines into a tourism powerhouse, we have continued to promote the Philippines domestically and to the world. Through the efforts of the DOT and our partner, our attached agency, the Tourism Promotions Board, we have ushered in no less than 3.33 billion pesos in estimated sales leads generated out of the various international expos that we have participated in across all hemispheres in the world in Asia, the Middle East, Europe, the Americas, and the like. And domestically, 
we have also tried to connect our regions to each other because admittedly uh, siguro no meron pa tayong mga kababayan na uh, living in Luzon for example that have never been to Mindanao or living in uh, Central Visayas that have never been to the hinterlands of northern, northern Luzon so we've put up these uh, regional uh, tourism expos. We've done the North Luzon uh, Tourism Expo. We're also done with the Mindanao Tourism Expo. And uh, soon we're holding the Central Philippines Tourism Expo, wherein we bring our regional uh, tourism officials, stakeholders from the public and private sector to these uh, specific areas of the country to be able to familiarize them with what are the tourism offerings of these areas. And so the effort is to be able to sustain each other in terms of tourism complementary. revenues. Complementary. Correct, yes. Okay. Ma'am, thank you very much. Uh, Mads, Salamat may follow up si Mads. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, regarding to this Occidental Mindoro, may monitoring po yung Department of Tourism kung gano'ng kalaki na po yung losses sa tourism sector and ano-ano na po yung naitulong po ng DOT. I think you mean Oriental, Mendoro? Yeah. No, ma'am. Uh, Occidental. Uh, yung problema po sa electricity supply sa Occidental, Mendoro. Um, Naapektuhan po kasi, di ba? Malaki yung problema po na kawala ng kuryente doon. Uh, problema din nila yung sa tourism sector. Marami po yung mga hotel, mga resort doon. Yung halos hindi po nakakapag-operate. Ano po yung naging tulong ng DOT doon? Actually, that's a very timely question because I've recently been in conversation with the Secretary of Energy, wherein we discuss the manners by which uh, their department is trying to manage the various power interruptions in areas across the country. And what uh, we are proposing to do in the DOT is to have a comprehensive discussion on how we may be able to provide a roadmap, especially to our tourism stakeholders, as far as uh, the provision of stable power supply. But uh, I think the extensive discussion on resolving the power issues are within the territory of the Department of Energy, and I trust in the wisdom of the good secretary to be able to answer that question. The Department of Tourism is always prepared to lend assistance where it is necessary, and this comes in the form of the continued work of our regional offices in terms of corresponding to uh, needs as far as uh, trainings, promotions, and the like. Okay. TV5? Okay. Laila Chikadora. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, nakikipag-ugnayan rin po ba tayo sa DEI o sa mga provincial or local governments regarding lang po sa mga SRPs ng mga pagkain or inumin to ensure na hindi naman po masyadong taga para po sa ating mga tourists, whether local or foreign po? Early on in the Marcos administration last year, when the issue on overpricing uh, with regard to a specific island in Bohol had come up, we already proposed the formation of a joint working group between the DOT, the DTI, uh, the DA, and other related government agencies that are uh, chiefly involved in the determination of the price of goods. And so it is a continuous conversation that our joint working group is having in terms of us presenting to them our uh, hopes of managing uh, the cost of goods and them also uh, ensuring that uh, the pressures that ultimately uh, define the prices of these goods are properly managed. Uh, the DOT is not chiefly uh, in charge of uh, uh, mandating uh, basic prices, but uh, we are conscious of the necessity of providing reasonable pricing, and that is why we have formed that joint working group. 
One more question po regarding Vanessa Hudgens. Alam naman natin na uh, well, she went back to the Philippines to rediscover her roots. Um, yung pung documentary na ginawa niya, how do you think will it affect yung ating tourism since she went to Palawan and other um, beautiful tourist destinations in the Philippines po? Model ba natin siya? She was conferred uh, with a tourism ambassador um, status uh, by no less than our president, and we're grateful for uh, Ms. Hudgens's help in terms of telling the story of the Philippines to the world. And we foresee that uh, her visit to Palawan, which she generously shared with her 50 million followers all over the world, definitely brought uh, positive attention to the country. But whether it's uh, Ms. Vanessa Hudgens, our, fe our fellow Filipinos from all over the world, all of us, have the opportunity to become tourism ambassadors for our country by telling the positive story about the Filipino and heralding the good news about the Philippines. Which is why we're very excited to uh, continue to institute the Visita Be My Guest program, which provides incentives for our fellow Filipinos to become tourism ambassadors for our country. They simply have to invite a foreign friend, guest, or spouse, or family to the Philippines in any of our 12 selected destinations. Correct, yes. They register in bbmg.philippines.travel and indicate their invitee, and they will have chances to win raffle prizes, including house and lot, condominiums. That's a DOT program. Yes, in partnership with the Department of Migrant Workers as well as the Tourism Promotions Board. Can you advertise that not be an a visita be my guest at dot.gov.ph bayan ma? Yes. The visita be my guest website is bbmg.philippines.travel. You can register as a sponsor and invite a foreigner to come to our country to any of our selected 12 destinations. And then you will have an opportunity to win raffle prizes that include house and lot, condominiums, free airline tickets, free shopping spree, and free holiday packages to All various tax -free. destinations. All tax-free. Yes, absolutely. So uh, this is a great opportunity for our fellow Filipinos here and around the world to continue to support for, for Philippine how long, tourism. how long is this program? Be, be Sita be my guest. Yes, yeah, so the program will last until uh, May 2024 oh, because this is also part of the 50-year celebration of the DOT since uh, Philippine tourism is now 50 years old. Since when? Since 1973. Month? Uh, what month? May. Oh, May then. The anniversary of the Philippine Navy. May. May. Yes. Ayo, May 11. Oh, my last question. Ah, ne, may tanong pala from the... Mama, dadagdagan pa po ba yung 12 um, destinations na to? Initially, we're piloting the 12. And pilot. as we see the success of the program, we're definitely open to adding more destinations. May, may send in question si Lawrence Tanhoko ng Radio Pilipinas. Sure na po ba sila na kailangan palitan ang slogan na It's more fun in the Philippines considering yung impact nito sa tourism natin? As mentioned, we are enhancing the tourism slogan and will definitely take into consideration the opinion of our tourism stakeholders. May I just highlight that uh, global trends supported by data from various uh, reliable and reputable tourism-related uh, publications have indicated that post-pandemic, people's reasons for travel have also uh, changed. Chief of which is that people now wish to have substantive, immersive, and cultural, authentic experiences where they have opportunities to get to know the culture of the place that they're visiting. People also value the opportunity to get to know communities. These trends correspond very well to the assets of Philippine tourism that have yet to be fully maximized. Our culture, our people, our communities. The best assets. Correct. 
And that is why uh, the enhanced tourism slogan will give our country an opportunity to market itself, not just as a fun destination, which it will continue to be, but also a destination for everything else that includes highlighting our culture and our people. Na wala yung ipapunch na ko kayo sinasabi mo mam sa tourism boom. It all started with a Cebu. Cebu, your home province Cebu. Ma'am, my last question before we wind this down. Let's turn to politics. I know that you are identified with P. Pizarra, who is with Lakas, and I know you were also got from the regional Cebu Regional Party. You joined the Lakas also. So, is there also a shift to your political uh, leaning or a party or whatever? My focus is my duty to my country, and that is to ensure that tourism transformation for the Philippines ensues. Tourism goes beyond politics, and that I perceive to be the greatest strength of the Philippine tourism industry, in that no matter your political inclination, you are a stakeholder for Philippine tourism. And therefore, I continue to espouse the message of both our President, Bongbong Marcos, and our Vice President, Sara Duterte, the message of unity and hope. Because there is so much to hope for in the Philippine tourism industry. And Mama Richu, and to all our friends in media here, I request that we continue to be champions for Philippine tourism and to remind our fellow Filipinos that every time you travel, every time you book a flight, a hotel, a boat trip, a land trip, every time you buy a pasalubong, you help a Filipino family. You help a Filipino tourism frontline worker. No matter the politics of the day, tourism will always prevail in the hearts and minds of our fellow Filipinos because it is such a great source of livelihood. And I'm very pleased to know that uh, our president and our vice president continue to espouse this message of unity and hope for our country. Well said, ma'am. I was about to stand up and applaud you. For the... <laughs> on, on a light note, ma'am, how do you work with the great shadows of your late grandfather and your mother, Cebu Governor Gwen? Well, I feel very... And at your side, the congressman. Yeah. I feel very privileged and uh, fortunate to learn from my grandfather, the late Deputy Speaker and Governor Pabling Garcia, and of course my mother, uh, Governor Gwen Garcia, as well as to be given the guidance of my husband, Deputy Speaker Duke Frasco. At the same time, taking the lessons that I have learned from them, I try to work as hard as I can to make an impact in the brief time that I have had in tourism to show that uh, if you work hard, if you persevere, and if you focus on the task at hand, there is no challenge that you cannot prevail over. As they say in Cebuano, kumbati. Despite the difficulties and challenges that you face, padayun to, and that forward. is what I espouse for myself, because I feel that uh, learning from my family, you know, there is really no substitute for hard work, and I look forward to being judged by my countrymen not on my words but on my work. On that note, I would like to thank our very hands-on, very uh, global tourism secretary, global but parochial tourism secretary for giving us much of her time to give us the tourism roadmap and we hope to see it in the next 2023 to up to 2028 plan, di ba ma'am? Good luck ma'am and we wish to contribute to your efforts to promote the Philippine tourism. Thank you. Daghan kaing salamat.